Okay, I'm going to talk to you guys about what I've been working on lately. And lately I've been working on doing the powders um, for crazy. You want to do the creasing early on because if you don't do that, um, it will come out harsh and you don't want that to happen because as you layer and layer and layer, those will seal your powders in, um, keeping them from falling off. Like paint, you may um, touch them up through the process but um, you won't put like as much or the lighter it's just like the paint the lighter you touch it um, the lighter the creasing will the harder you touch it the darker the creasing will become also depending on how much powder you're using so right now I'm just creasing all the babies right now that have at least two layers on them because you want at least two layers uh, so that it, it has that to grab onto. Because um, if you do it on a, like, a kit that hasn't been painted yet, it may not adhere as well. So right now, I'm just creasing all the babies in the studio uh, so that they're done and ready to go. So I'm behind on painting. Also because I was like bedridden for two weeks with vertigo and it was really rough. So that's really put me behind. And then I worked hard to get uh, Saskia done, so just got to work on rooting her. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you like what I'm, what, what I'm talking about. So this is a coastal scent. It comes in like a little plastic thing. Uh, this is a coastal scent um, eyeshadow, which is the powder. When I say powder, I'm talking Coastal Scent eyeshadow. The reason why Coastal Scent is referred to by Sue Ellen, um, she uh, said that the um, Coastal Scents have better pigment and they blend nicely. So most people that are using powders are using coastal scents but people who don't want to pay for shipping and all that kind of stuff or depending if they're in australia or a different country you know it's a lot more expensive for them to get these i'm in canada it wasn't too bad um but they're three three dollars american um so yeah, so these are three dollars American, so I paid like five dollars Canadian plus shipping. This color is called Fine Wine, and that is for the creasing. And you want to make sure they're matte. You don't want anything with glitter or anything shining or anything like that. You want it to be a matte. So the Fine Wine is one of the colors for creasing and blushing. The other one is called Corn Flower Blue, and that one is for shading and, um, you know, for the blue under the feet and in the ears and, and things like that. So that's what you can use the blue for. Some people do the veins. Um, most don't with powders, but some do. I've actually heard of people... Um, doing an entire baby uh, with the powders, which I find kind of strange because um, I don't know how they're going to even that out and translute it and all that. But I mean, that's what they do. But me personally, I'm just using them for creasing, blushing, um, and some of the detailing. And I'll also use paint for some of the detailing. So. What I figured is, I'll show you on video, make it easier than trying to explain it into words. So right now I'm just working on Joanna, who's really far behind from, you know, my vertigo. But this is Joanna's face. And I just finished um, the creasing and uh, some, some of the blushing. This lighting is, let me try and move it. 
No, nope, not so great. I'm trying to find a good lighting here. Okay. Oh, that's somewhat better. Okay, so these creases will, um, you see how they're, they're quite dark. So the reason why that is, like I said in the beginning of the video, is you're going to layer them out. So they're going to come lighter and lighter as you layer, just like if you were to do with paint. So you may have to touch them up uh, now and then, just like you would do with paint. But uh, the reason, this is the reason why you, if you do use the powders, you want to do them earlier so that you can layer it out. And also the layers seal in the powders from falling off. Now this is for air dry artists. Um, I have heard for Heat Genesis artists that um, they have chipped off and have come off. And, you know, that could be just due to the fact that eyeshadow is not made for baking, right? So, um, I wouldn't suggest it to Heat Genesis artists um, unless you speak to another Heat Genesis artist that had success with it. And they could let you know... Um, how they did it without it causing the chip off but as far as um air dry artists i've heard um great great things about it now the blushing i do near the end not not the complete end but i do closer to the end because um i don't want a lot of color changing with that and i just want to focus on the the skin tone so i do the blushing later on but the creases I did the um, eyelids under there her lips creased in with her lips and obviously the back of her neck um, now this is I did some of the shadow like on her nose you'll see that not shadow shading <laughs> on her nose and then on the sides here by her nose and just above her eyebrows and that will all you know blend through as I'm as I'm adding the layers and I'm gonna uh, turn the camera around so you can see her here so this is here and then this is the inside of her leg here and then I did that part under her foot and I went around I went around her toes, you know, to give that indentation, um, and in between her, this camera shine it, in between her toes, there, just, oh, these live videos are not working that great for me, to, so, and I, I went around her ankles here, and then here, her feet there, and again, through her toes. And her arms, you'll really see it on her, on her arms here because she has deep fat rolls here. So it's a little darker there. And then on her fingers and on the other side, she does have some blue from paint um, because she was done halfway with full cart, but I've upgraded to professional paint. So she's in professional paint um, at this point. So... Uh, there's the creases there. Like, again, they're deeper because of the fat rolls here. And all of this will layer light as I go lighter as I go along because she's still... I think she's at... I think 14 layers right now. A lot of my babies, um, including the blushing and the nails the details and all of that by the time they're done they're like 30 layers so she's she's halfway to go but yeah so what I'm just doing now is shading I mean increasing all the babies that are in the studio early on and then I'm gonna start going through the painting so this Joanna will go up for sale when she's done um, my sister decided not that she doesn't want a sleeping baby. So 
she's not keeping the easting kit so I just stripped the easting kit the video is on the video of that is on the account in the gallery um, so I'm repainting her in professional paint and then she will go up for sale and there's there's a few that will be up for sale and then I have um, a custom chase coming next month and I have a custom Maddie in November she's on layaway right now so lots going on I got 12 babies going right now so I'm like <laughs> got a lot going on right now plus I'm taking the advanced classes with uh, Sue Ellen and just so much going on so I wanted to sh show you on video and explain it to you how it's done and I use um, paint brushes and makeup brushes I mostly use the makeup brushes for the blushing and the shading so um, like here's one that I use to smooth out the um, eyebrows are above the eyes here but for the smaller creases I use this brush like the more fine line I use this very thin brush and I also use for the really fine lines I use this this is actually a nail detail brush um, I know it's not focusing in but yeah I use that um, and these are actually nail brushes that I bought on Amazon um, and then for the deeper creases I use um, this one which is a makeup brush so I'll use that one and then the, I uh, also use this one too to get into because um, you see it's got a very long sorry things don't want to focus long point on it so I use that one too so I use a variation of paint brushes um, also sponges and um, things like that so also I will not be painting my babies um, anymore with mop brushes okay so the, these are mop brushes they, they will not be painted with those anymore. They'll be painted with wash brushes. Like that. And then they will, instead of using the sponges to, um, you know, blend, I'll be using, which a lot of artists have done, um, are using kabuki brushes. Yeah, they're flat. See how they're flat in the front? These, this one I got on Amazon for $10. And it makes it so much easier and so much faster. And you and it gives you a, um, a texturing too. You can use Kabuki brushes on Heat Genesis. Um, you see how it has those bristles there? It was focusing in and now it's being a jerk. <laughs> Um, it has these bristles on them and that gives it the nice texturing and it's so much, there you go. And it's so much faster than, um, using the sponges. And I have heard from Heat Genesis artists that they do use these. So, um, it will work for air dry and heat Genesis. If you're doing it with air dry, you don't, you only want to go on the areas that are, you know where it's uh, where there's more paint or there's um, like a stream going down you don't want to completely dry it because it'll cause um, like breakage in your paint and you want a smooth layer so you just do it enough where you don't have any spoilage or, or anything like that going on so I have done this already um, a few times on my Levi kit and it's just amazing and it's so much faster and it will save you money on needing so many of these um, so what I'm gonna do is is I'm, I'm stocking up on these um, so I can separate the colors you know but right now I have to just 
share it with the colors. Um, I also got this flat one in my makeup kit uh, here. So, but I'm assuming it's a kabuki. It looks the same, just shaped differently. Um, I, uh, the other one is actually a kabuki that I got on Amazon in Canada for $10. Okay, still modeling with the sea sponges um, and other stuff. So, these are techniques that I'm assuming from joining the group were taught by Sue Ellen. I was told that they were taught by Sue Ellen. Um, I am sharing this with you because it is shared in the group. So this is not anything I'm telling you that you can't find out in the group for free. I just can't do tutorials with it because um, those are Sue Ellen's classes. So, um, but I'm just giving you some basic ideas um, of how my babies are going to get done. And I think it's important for people who are going to buy my babies to see how they're getting done. So, um... I hope this um, gives you an idea of what um, I've been up to. <laughs> and, uh, oh, also, I, as I told you, I do not use full cart anymore. Um, I switched. I use a combination of these two paints right now. This is uh, Li Liquidex Basics, and it, it's high in pigment. It's award-winning for their pigments. Um... But I also use uh, these, which is the professional base for Liquidex. So I only use the other ones if, if I don't have this color. And this is professional Liquidex, as you can see. See? Proof! Professional! Um, and this is soft body Liquidex. And I will be switching to Ultimate Fusion, which is sold by Dolls by Sandy, which is air dry. And uh, Sue Ellen um, uses that in all her tutorials. So I will be switching to that in, in October. I just can't afford to do that now because I just switched to all those paints not that long ago. So, you know, it's, I want to use those up before I switch over. And, uh, yeah, so lots of great things learning so much and improving myself and and my babies and I'm excited I also decided um to do a Maddie for myself um I wound up falling in love with her anyway um I think my issue with the Maddie I wound up giving my sister was that she was done in full cart and I want my babies done in professional paint so um my sister is going to replace the kit and get me another kit and I'm going to redo her. So I will probably have her, she's going on layaway in November if they have any. So December, January, February, I will start her for myself. And, um, and then I have a custom one that will be here in November. So lots of Maddie's going around. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope this explains everything. Um, I'm trying not to babble too much. But I just want to add for those of you that enjoy seeing my fish. I'm so excited because yesterday I got a flower horn cichlid baby. And I am just so excited because I can't usually... Uh, I've wanted one of those for like a couple of years now. But when, the, when they sell them in the pet stores, they're usually sold uh, when they're older. Like nine months. And they're $250. And, um, I can't afford that. <laughs> so, um, I found baby ones at, um, pet store near my house for $20. I was ecstatic. So, um, I'm raising one and they're big fish. Uh, she will, one of them, just one of them needs no smaller than 75 gallons to be comfortable and healthy. So yeah, she, he, I named him Cosmo. <laughs> and um, I gave my sister all my tropical fish. So, yeah. And then my sister gave me her um, cichlids. They're hiding right now because of the camera. 
They're not scared of me. They just don't like the camera. There's one of my Jack Dempsey's. He's back there. So right now the baby flower horn is in the 55 gallon. So um, when I get the, uh, um, when I upgrade his tank to 75, I'm going to put the smaller cichlids that are in here into the 55. So I got that going on too. I just love working down here. I got my fish all around me, my babies, and uh, that's, that's my happy place. So I hope you learn about the powders here. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me questions about them. Um, this video will also be posted on my Facebook page for um, Precious Little Lambs. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stop babbling now. So have a great weekend. Please stay safe out there with the COVID and um, follow uh, safety measures. Thank you.